Welcome back, Kipsters. Please compare your stop and jot responses to the exemplar responses on the screen. You may have noticed that some of your abiotic or biotic factors were a little bit different than mine. There were more than three in the picture. So if you have some overlap, but some different abiotic factors that are non-living and some different biotic factors that are living, that is okay. That brings us to our aim for the day. Kipsters will be able to explain where energy storage molecules in an ecosystem come from. If we know where the energy storage molecules come from, then we can start to figure out why there weren't enough in the biodome. And hint, this does have something to do with abiotic and biotic factors. So we will be reading the article Sunlight and Life to help us find this information. A couple of things about features. If you click on this button in the bottom left corner, you can read the article in Spanish. If you click on this icon in the top left corner, the article will read aloud to you and you can follow along with the text. And if you click on the gear icon in the top right corner, then you can change the size of the text to make it smaller or larger. Now our task is to read the introduction to annotate by summarizing, and to answer the comprehension questions as we try to gather information about where energy storage molecules come from in an ecosystem. Please listen and watch as I model summarizing for you. So here we are at the article, Sunlight and Life. And I'm wondering what sunlight has to do with energy storage molecules and ecosystems anyway. As we read today, we're going to be using the strategy of summarizing. Strong readers summarize after large chunks of text, like a paragraph. It helps them lock ideas into their brain. Watch and listen as I summarize the first paragraph. Paragraph one. The edge of a big lake is full of life. Fish dart through the bright green reeds. Ducks dive for algae growing in the shallow mud and insects buzz everywhere. However, if you go out to the middle of the lake and dive to the bottom, you'll find a dead zone, a dark and barren area with hardly any organisms. No fish, no plants, not much of anything. So I think what this is telling me is that there's more organisms that live near the edge of the lake than the center. And I don't really know why yet, so my, my summary will be incomplete. I'm going to click on this last word open up a note and type in my summary statement. More organisms live near the edges of the lake than in the center. Moving on to the second paragraph. Why do some areas support so much life while others are relatively lifeless? To survive, organisms need energy and this energy comes from energy storage molecules. These molecules store energy that can be released in an organism's body. Energy storage molecules include glucose, starch, and fat. Ecosystems with lots of organisms need to have lots of energy storage molecules to keep all of those organisms alive. Some ecosystems contain lots of energy storage molecules, while others don't contain as many. So when I read this, I think this is about how energy storage molecules are really important for ecosystems and how the number of energy storage molecules in an ecosystem can affect the number of organisms that can live there. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this last word and type out my summary. Ecosystems with lots of organisms need lots of energy storage molecules. This is particularly interesting to me because of the biodome. Um, and I'm thinking about why some ecosystems might have a lot of energy storage molecules and others might not. Now it's your turn. Your task is to finish reading the introduction of Sunlight and Life. Do not go on to any other text. And you'll be gathering information about where energy storage molecules come from. Please annotate each paragraph by summarizing, and when you're done, answer the comprehension questions found in your Google Doc. After you've answered the comprehension questions, please go on to the next segment of the video.